six days of toil and labor. Thank you for protecting us, for providing for us. Thank you, God, for holding us together when life's vicious vicissitudes threaten to rip us apart. Thank you for this opportunity for fellowship with you, for worship, and for the nurturing of faith. Now, Lord, thank you for personal forgiveness and personal cleansing. Touch these sinful lips and make the word meaningful to some heart somewhere. Direct your will to the blessing and the encouragement of those who have been recently baptized, and yea, those who have gotten discouraged, even those who have been baptized a long time ago. We pray, Lord, for those who are in the valley of decision, who need to make a decision for their everlasting salvation. May something be said this evening that will conquer sinners and comfort saints, will comfort our hearts, nurture our faith. We ask in Jesus' name, and let God's children say, Amen. So let me pause and say to you, pick up your phone and uh, text a friend and send a WhatsApp or I'll give you a few moments to call. Call a friend and tell them it's time to be connected. It's time for the New Believers Focus as we look at how we can nurture our faith. Call up somebody who may have been discouraged. Call up somebody who may have been drifting because of challenges this week or last month or whatever. Take the time and call somebody up and say, let's spend a few moments together with the old man. Thank you for company. And so this afternoon, I want to deal with, what do you do when, when the challenges of life causes your doubts and fears to challenge your faith? How do you cope? How do you find answers when your faith seem to buckle beneath the weight of doubt and fear. I want to say right on the outset, life can be or life is at times very challenging. So don't believe that because you are facing challenges that it means you are losing your hold on God. No, it happens to all of us. And we want to take a few minutes just to reassure you to refocus on God. When, when you come to the crossroads of doubts and fears, when you come to the crossroads where, where what you expected in your new journey with Jesus is not balancing out with the reality of your existence and your current challenges. Hang with me then for the next few moments. And so I begin with the question, how do I overcome doubt, disappointment, and fear when my faith is shaken by the reality of the circumstances with which I deal? And sometimes it is Categorize, and I want to use two simple categories in my encounter with new believers. For the most part, it's either relational or financial. For the most part, in my encounter, in, in responding to the calls, and I must confess that, that sometimes it's difficult to respond to all of the calls, and I do try. But for the most part, the issues can be contextualized in two groups, relational and financial. And they are real. And someone said to me, Samuels, you know, there are people better than you who have suffered worse than you, and there are persons worse than you who have suffered less than you. There, there is no equilibrium. There is, there is no equality here. The devil sometimes uses suffering and challenges to threaten your faith. But I want to use a statement that may even challenge you, that, that you and I ought to get to the place, and I know it's not easy, but it's possible to get to that place 
where our faith hear the old man to get to the place where our faith triumphs over the facts that we contend with. To get to the place where your faith can triumph over the facts. And so I want to use uh, a text from the suffering saga of Job. In Job 13 and verse 15, he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Now let me give you a background to that awesome text. Because unless you have the background, you may not understand how, how, how challenging this moment was for him. In the first chapter, we, we walk through this issue of the, the struggle between good and evil and the source of the struggle. That the devil challenged God that, that if God would just move his protection from Job, he, the devil, would make Job curse God to his face. Now, God could depend on Job. And so, I'm glad that the devil can't do anything to you unless God gives permission. And if God gives permission, you must know God has you in his hands. And so all of Job's children died in one day. And as if that were not enough, he lost all of his animals, all his assets, all his business, went down to zero in one day. And by the time you get to the end of Job chapter 1, the last couple of verses, he said, Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord takes away. He, he, he sometimes... It happens to us. We don't understand all the stuff that's happening to us, but we know God is in charge. And so we, we say, God, you're responsible for both good and evil. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord takes away. Blessed be his name. And things got worse. Somebody sang, if it ain't one thing, it's another. It got worse. Anything that could go wrong went wrong. Have you ever had a challenge, and when you think it couldn't get worse, the floodgates are opened up, and the ground beneath your feet seems unsteady, unstable. Job, in the midst of all of that, would teach us a lesson, though hard to learn. Job said, I don't understand the source of my suffering, but if it comes from God, though he slay me, yet will I trust him for he shall be my hope and my salvation. How do I handle, how do I treat with doubt and fears? How do I deal with the challenges when they threaten my faith? Answer number one, go back to the source of your health. In the text, Job said, though he slay me, Job is saying that ultimately nothing can happen, nothing will happen unless God gives permission. And if he permits it, his will will never take me, Job must have been saying, where his grace cannot sustain me. So though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Point number one, when you get to the crossroads, where your doubts and fears threaten the very faith that you have, when you feel your faith crumbling, number one, go back to the source of your faith. What did the disciples do? What did Jesus do when he met the two disciples on the road to Emmaus? They were with Jesus before he died. He taught them, he prayed with them, he fed them with the bread from heaven. And when he died, they couldn't believe he was dead. They had to accept he was dead and they couldn't understand why he died, though he tried to help them. And here it is, three days after his death, they were going back to their former life. 
Luke 23, 24 tells us a story. They said, we trusted it would have been he who should have redeemed Israel. What did Jesus do in helping them to understand, to deal with their doubts and their fears? What did Jesus do to help them? Well, whatever he did to help them is the same thing he's doing to help you and me in the vortex, in the valley, and the shadow of our doubts. When faith threatens to overwhelm, to be overwhelmed rather, by fears. The preacher's first point is, go back to the source of your strength. Go back to where you first saw the light. When darkness seemed to hide his face, you can still rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, the anchor can hold. If you'll go back, what did Jesus do? The Bible said, and beginning at Moses, he opened the scriptures and reasoned with them of the things concerning himself. Their fear had almost triumphed over their faith. Jesus took them back to the source of their faith. He took them back to the word of God. He took them back to the written word. He took them back to the Bible. When you are at the crossroads, whether the challenges are relational or financial, maybe prior to your baptism, your source of companionship and happiness then was a fiancé, a, 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 a relationship that becomes your inner circle. But then the Holy Ghost showed you a better way to live and you made the decision, you made the choice to give God a chance to help you experience meaningful change. The devil is not going to fold his arms and watch you float on to God's kingdom. You're going to have challenges. What do you do when you get to the crossroads? When fear and doubt threatens your faith, go back to the source. Go back to God's word. Go back to the word. When tears dim your eyes, go back to the word. When the pain and the heartache is so intense that you don't even feel like praying, the song says when you don't feel like praying, pray Go back to the word. What did Jesus do to help them? The same thing he's doing to help us. He took them back to the word. He took them back to the beginning. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. And the, the, the response in the text says, And Jesus took them back beginning at Moses. He began at Genesis. When you get to the crossroads... And you feel your faith is waning. When your tears are falling. When you don't even have any tears left. And you think you can't go on. Go back to the source. God is the same place that you left him when you begin wandering in fear. He's at the same place. And so Jesus walked with them. And he opened the scriptures. And when he opened the scriptures, all he did was to remind them of the same things he preached to them. All I'm doing is reminding you of the same things I preached to you before you made the decision and after you made the decision. God is the same God with the same power and the old devil will be the same devil until the day the Lord comes when doubts Arise and fears dismay. Go back to the source. Go back to the word. Go back to the word of God. And so Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The second point I want to make, what do you do when you're at the crossroads of life, when, when doubts arise and fears are made and your faith is almost down to the ground? Trust in God and stay the course. 
It's difficult, I know. But I told you, before you got baptized, it's a hard road to travel and a mighty long way to go. But Jesus, the blessed Savior, will lead you all the way you go. And each step you take, the rough it is, you'll discover that the will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot sustain you. Go back to the source, number one. Number two. Trust in God and stay the course. Job said, Job, if you're just joining me, we're talking about how do you deal with the challenges of life when fears and doubts threaten to overwhelm your faith? Type in the chat, type in the chat, Pastor. I'm having some struggles. Type it in there, Pastor. You're talking real stuff. Type it in there. If it's real to you, type it in there. That my faith sometimes is challenged. Type it in there. I'm dealing with life's challenges. Type it in there. And I say go back to the source. Number two, trust in God and stay the course. Job said in Job 13, 15, though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. That word yet from the English dictionary is a powerful word, and I'm going to come to it in another text, but let me give you, uh, well, well, let me hold it until I get to the second text. Uh, Job said in Job 13 and verse 15, though he slay me, leprosy is eating his body. Can you imagine you are decomposing? Uh, the stench of your deathness is in the air, and friends have abandoned you, and your mind is still alert. Trust in God and stay the course. Go back to the Bible, point number one. Go back to the source. Go back to, 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 to the first encounter with God. Trust in God and stay the course. And sometimes it will get worse before it gets better. Trust in God and stay the course. The devil will make you think it will never get better, but the devil is a liar. Trust in God and stay the course. So he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I need to read the text again for you. It's Job 13. It's Job 13 and verse 15. Yes, Job 13 and verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain mine own way before him. In other words, I can't understand him. I can't see what he's doing. I don't understand it. I don't like it. But I will maintain my faith. I will maintain my way. Let him send me to hell for obeying the Bible. Let him send me to hell for trusting him. But I'll die trusting him. I'll die obeying him. I'll die doing what he says. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Go back to the source. Go back to the word. Trust God and stay the course. Hear what Job said. Hear what Job said. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In verse 16 he said, He also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. Job said, he shall be my salvation. I won't let relational challenges, I won't let financial challenges cause me to be a hypocrite because a hypocrite shall not stand before him. I know sometimes it gets rough. I wish I could tell you that you will never have challenges. I wish I could tell you, new believer, that after your baptism, you'll just float on into God's kingdom. Sometimes the devil will cause your loved ones to die just to shake your faith. He'll cause you to lose your job just to shake your faith. He'll allow folk to tell lies on you. They'll tell so much lies that you'll discover even sometimes your friends will believe the lie and start doubting you. But you don't doubt God. Trust in God and stay the course. A young friend 
was talking with me one day and I can never, you know, you get some, some wisdom sometimes from the young people. He said, Pastor, you've been through too much. It's like a man out in the ocean. You, you, you've swam, the ship wrecked out there and you've been swimming on your back. You've been swimming on your tummy and now you are at the shore where you can almost stand up. He said, you'll be foolish now to drown in shallow waters. Nico Morgan, you are a great philosopher. He said, having swam so far, having encountered rough waves, having come all this way, don't drown where you can stand up. In other words, you're almost home. You're almost home. Don't let go. Cry if you must, but don't let go. So point number one, what do I do when I come to the crossroads, the crossroads of challenges, when relational issues, whether they be with siblings or parents, husbands or wife, or a relationship that was so steady that it seemed like it was made in heaven, but now you're living on earth and you discover all that glitter is not gold. You discover that it's not working out. Do not sacrifice your integrity on the altar of, ex of expediency. Don't, don't sacrifice lasting stuff for temporary pleasure. What do you do when, well, how do I cope when, when I get to the crossroads where doubts and fears threatened my faith? Point number one, go back to the source. Go back to God and his word. The word cannot lie. Jesus took the disciples when, when they lost faith, when, when, when the death of Jesus and the cry of the crowd and all the hostile issues, they went back. On the journey, going back to their former life, when Jesus joined them, Christ will always join. He'll never allow the devil to destroy you. If you're listening for him, you'll hear his voice. If you're looking out for him, you'll see him. He'll appear. And beginning at Moses, he began at the source. He began with the Bible. He took them back to the source. He took them back to the word. What do you do when you're in the valley and the crossroads of doubts and fears? When your faith is crumbling and life's challenges seems that you can't bear them, you can't handle them. Go back to God's word. Go back to the source. And point number two, the second point I made was simply this. Trust in God and stay the course. Trust him. Job said, though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. I want to take you to one of my favorite texts from an Old Testament book that I love. It's the book Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Uh, hardly anybody read Habakkuk without reading chapter 3. Uh, you read the first two chapters and you see all his challenges. But I love chapter 3. Habakkuk 3 and verse 17, 17 and 18, my favorite verses in the book, in the entire book. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom and the labor of the olive shall fail and there'll be no, no, no herd out there, no sheep in the pen, no herd in the field. Field, no food in the house although the fig tree shall not blossom and the labor of the olive shall fail and there's no herd in the stall yet I'll stand upon my watch I'll joy in the God of my salvation and there's that word yet again Job said though he slay me yet why eat he Habakkuk said although there is no food in the house Nothing in the field. The pocket is empty. The cupboard is empty. Don't know where to turn. Yet, yet, I'll stand upon my watch. Trust in God and stay the course. Yet, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Though he slay me, yet, what is the English meaning of that little word yet? Y-E-T. Well, I love one English uh, definition that says, Making a virtue of necessity. I love that. Making a virtue of necessity. Making the best of a bad situation. Making the best of the circumstances you're in. You're, you're down to dust. You're down to nothing. Oh, but down in the dust, the best place to be is still in the hand of God who made man from the dust dust of the ground although the fig tree shall not blossom though he slay me yet will I trust him what do I do 
when I get to the crossroads of life, when I don't feel like going back to church, when I'm hurt by folk in the church, when I pray to God for this, but the opposite happened. What do I do when I'm down in the valley and my strength is failing and my emotional resources can't help me to cope? What do I do? The pastor isn't there. The Bible worker isn't there. And the boyfriend I had once and the girlfriend I had once, I, I left them for the church. I left them for Jesus. But now I'm lonely and loneliness won't leave me alone. What do I do when in the valley and the crossroads, doubts and fears threatened my faith? Go back to the source. Go back to the word of God. Go back to where you first saw the light. Go back to where you first saw the light. God is the same. Oh, I, I was out at a church. There were two caskets inside the church. One contained the body of a 76-year-old gentleman. The other, the body of a young member, 16-year-old girl, raped and killed and stuffed with stones. And the man on the outside asked me, Preacher, I'm not a Christian. And so I don't care about church and God. But that young girl in there, if there is anybody in this community who was a Christian, we all admired her. We all know she was a Christian. Tell me something. You claim to believe in God. Where was God when she was screaming for help? I said, sir, I am not the best defense for God. He can defend himself. But I have a simple answer for you. God was the same place he was when on the cross of Calvary, his son screamed out the words of Psalm 22 and verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God was the same place and yet Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 19 that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I can't answer why God permits the things he allows. I can't answer why God sometimes allows the devil to have the upper hand. But this I know, the will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot sustain you. And his grace is sufficient for every trial you face. What do I do when doubts and fears threatens my faith? Go back to the source. Go back to the word. Point number two, trust in God and stay the course. Job said, though he slay me, I would lie to you, preacher though I am. Sometimes I have some rough days. There are days I don't feel like singing. There are days I don't feel like preaching. Hear the preacher, but I know that my best alternative, my best hope in the midst of the rough circumstances is still God. Like Job, you and I will have some challenges. Can I tell you one more? I've preached it sometimes, and I'm not the best preacher of that text. Jeremiah 20, the prophet. The prophet does three things of the prophet. The prophet critiques the dominant teachings of the times. The prophet articulates the pain of the people. The prophet provides God's response to the human predicament. So Jeremiah, in critiquing the dominant teachings, found himself one man against the crowd, against the king who had become a hypocrite, against the false prophets who were being fed from the king's face. Micaiah slapped the prophet and they placed him in a slimy dungeon. Jeremiah critiques the dominant teachings and if you're going to be a faithful servant of God sometimes the people will not like what you have to say he critiques the dominant philosophy and teachings the prophet's second assignment is to articulate the pain of the people and sometimes the pain of the people is also the pain of the prophet and so Jeremiah in his pain, in the 20th chapter, he said, God, you promised me stuff, 
that you haven't delivered. He said, God, you have deceived me. And then he said in verse 9, I will never again take your name on my tongue. But in the same pericope, he said, but your word was like fire. Shut up in my bones and I couldn't keep quiet. What do you do when you're in the valley of life's vicious vicissitudes? What do you do when doubt and fears threatens your faith? Go back to the source. Go back to where you first saw the light. Go back to God's word. And the second point, trust in God and stay the course. Job said, though he slay me, I'm going to stay the course. Though he slay me, I'm going to trust him. Though he slay me, I am going to stay the course. Habakkuk said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, and the labor of the olive shall fail, and there'll be no food in the house, and the business will go sour, I'll go, and the things I prayed about and said course, and I see the devil make a mess of them. What do you do? Habakkuk said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, and the labor of the olive shall fail, and there'll be no herd in the field, no food in the house, yet I'll stand upon my watch, stay the course, yet, that word Y-E-T, that little English word Y-E-T, just three little letters, making a virtue of necessity, making the best of a bad situation, trusting God in spite of. And I say to those who've lost their loved ones, I can't understand it. Those who've lost their jobs, I say to you, lady, you've lost your husband, you've lost your house, you've lost your wife, sir, you've lost your children. Maybe you've been abandoned by your wife or abandoned by your husband or abandoned by your parents, abandoned by your children. Maybe as you're listening to me, you're down to your last dollar and you don't know where the next meal will come from. I can't tell you that God will answer before the dollar is spent. He may test your faith by waiting like he waited until Lazarus was dead. He may wait until days after your last dollar is spent to see how badly do you love him. How Do you love him badly? Is there such a phrase? Or madly? I close this by saying life is real. And so when you face the real realities of life, don't ever believe that it's because you are not a Christian. Life is real. Let's begin the closing scenes here with that. Life is real. And sometimes like a laser-guided missile, the devil zeroes in on you. As if he has no one else to tempt and no one else to cause hell on. And you sometimes wonder why the hell the devil don't go someplace else. He sets up residence in your house. It's because he sees something down on the inside that loves God with a fierce determination. Don't lose that. And so let me share with you in closing. Job trusted God. He stayed the course. And in the process, God gave him back his children. God gave him back double for all his trouble. He got back twice as many animals. And that's why I can tell you, in the rough and tumble, it may not be good to you, but it's good for us. David said, it was good for me that I suffered. Suffering is not good to us. But it's good for us. I close then by saying this to you. What do you do when you're in the valley in the shadow? When you're at the crossroads? What do you do when you're at the crossroads? When, when your fears and your doubts and your challenges causes your tears to fall. And, you, and the burden seems to fall like the unending waters of Duns River. I always wonder, why is it that Niagara Falls is always falling? Why is it? Because there's a source. Why is it that Duns River is always flowing? I've been going there since childhood. There's a source. There's also a source for your strength. And so uh, I, I can't remember her name, but she, she sang the song, Take Me to the King. And in the song is a 
a line that says, we need a word for the people's pain. And the pulpit must have a word for the people's pain. The pulpit says, God still makes sense. Even when you can't understand him. Focus on the word. Focus on deepening your prayer life. Focus on deepening your Bible study life. Focus on trying to understand God's will for your life. Focus on having the right connections when Esther faces trouble. And Mordecai said, if you hold your peace, you'll perish. She said, you call your folk to pray, but I and my maidens will fast and pray. You ought to have some prayer warriors as your closest friends. You ought to have prayer support. I'm done. Although somebody said to me, when, when he says I'm done, it means he's just halfway through. Well, let me prove them wrong this evening. I'm done. Trust in God. Stick to what the Bible says. And it's going to get rough. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. But hold to God's unchanging hand. And I close with this text. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. When you pass through the rivers. He never says if. He said when you pass through the waters, they shall not overflow you. When you pass through the fire, God said I won't let it burn you up. I'll be there in the midst of your fire. I'll be there in the midst of your waters. We'll walk through together. Stay the course. Focus on the word. Focus on prayer. Focus on the fact that others have gone through and we have their example. Focus on the fact that Jesus took the disappointed, depressed, and discouraged disciples who had given up on their faith. He took them back to the word. Go back to the word and they go forward with God. Let's pray our Father in heaven. Take us back to your word. When darkness seemed to veil your face, take us back to your word when we are threatened by life's doubts and fears and its challenges. Take us back to the word when grief and loneliness, when relational and financial issues threatens us. Help us to understand that if we focus on your word, faith can triumph over facts. The fact may be that the house is empty. The fact may be there's no money in somebody's pocket. The fact may be there's cancer in their body. The fact may be there is death in the house. The fact may be all negative, but faith can triumph over facts. Because Habakkuk said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, he's going to trust you. Job said he'll trust you. And his faith triumphed over the facts because you gave him double for his trouble. The old lady only had a little bit of oil in the bottom of the barrel. And yet you allowed her to have enough because faith can triumph over facts. Only five loaves and two small fish. But the boy placed it in your hands. Faith triumph over facts. The fact is that there were so many hungry people that the disciples said 200 penny worth of bread was nothing. But with five loaves and two small fish, you fed the multitude. Faith can triumph over facts. You said to the man whose child was dead, only believe and the child would live. He said, Master, you don't have to come to my house. Speak the word. Faith can triumph over facts. Oh, Lord God of heaven, there's somebody right now, some new believer, some old believer, someone who just joined your family, someone who's been in the family a long time, struggling with the challenges of life. Doubts are arising and fears are causing dismay. And faith seemed to be crumbling. Help them to focus on your word. Help them to go back to where they first saw the light. Help them, God, to trust in you and stay the course. Because they've always worked it out. Thank you. 
for healing someone right now. Thank you, God, for providing not only physical healing right now, but you are healing somebody's wounded, broken spirit. You're lifting up the fallen. You're opening up a door. Thank you. Bring us back to this platform tomorrow. What a word in the divine service hour. Hold on to us, God, because our hands are too weak to hold on to yours. And for those who have lost loved ones in the past days and weeks, O'Neill, Myrtle, Dr. Bertram, his children, and all the others, Marva, the mother in Kingston whose son, whose only son was crushed to death by a truck, others, God, whose spouses, whose children, whose parents were shot to death. We pray, Almighty God, for those who've buried their loved ones, but still the grief won't let them be. We pray for Mother Hines' children. We pray for all of the faithful ones who've left their children behind. So much love was invested in the hurt is equally as intense as the love that was invested. But we thank you for the day when death will triumph no more. We thank you for the day when life everlasting will triumph forever over death. Hasten the day when hope will triumph over despair. Hasten the day when faith will triumph over fear. Hasten the day when love will triumph over hate forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Well, it was my joy sharing with you this evening. And I invite you for a troublesome word in the divine service. And I'm going to tease my friend. I asked my friend to send out the link and he was troubling. He said, Pastor, it's too long and it's too troublesome. So let me tell you what I'm going to preach about that he was afraid to send out. Wrong side up, upside down, it's time for the pulpit to challenge the pew. Wrong side up, upside down, it's time for the pulpit to challenge the pew. That's our divine service message tomorrow. I'll see you then. God bless you and know that your faith can still triumph over the facts of your circumstances. Good night. God bless you. We thank you for having worshipped with us tonight. We thank God for the ministry of the word. We continue to encourage you to continue to feast on God's word through these presentations and as you also walk through the Bible in your own private Bible studies, as we continue to build relationships with God, we must sign off now. We look forward to seeing you in the morning. But until then, we say, stay connected to Jesus. Mm. One morning past day break as the crowd slowly gathered they were walking my Jesus of Calvary's hill so sad was his face that the birds hushed their singing like a sheep he was humbled to his father's own will I want to thank Jesus for the plan of salvation and to say Lord I love you you'll understand I want to be there on that great judge 
wanted to kiss all those nail scars in his feet and his hand. On the cross he was hanging. Shame and forsaken as they drove those grill nails in his hand and his feet as death closed his eyes his cry went to heaven he said father Just to kiss 